The worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. The Dow traders are standing there watching in amazement. I don't blame us. We're now down 43%. Almost everything there completely wiped out. And the NASDAQ, everything and more has been completely wiped out. Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. Can I get you to speak a little to Aaron? Yeah, one billion, two billion, three billion. <laughs> you can imagine the American economy is an economic train moving down a track that has no ending. And it picks up cargo and, and, and passengers as we go along. There's 330 million of us now, and there were only 4 million in 1790. And our farms are incredibly more productive and we have 75 million houses and we had a few huts then and we have great universities and all of these things. So we're just constantly moving more and more cargo and passengers along and occasionally uh, that train is going to get derailed. In 2008, you had uh, something close to a, uh, a bubble in home real estate, 50 million people had mortgages roughly at that time out of 75 million homeowners. When that bubble burst, it hit home to probably 40% of the households in the country, these people that had mortgages on their houses. And fear spread in the month of September 2008 at a rate uh, that was like a tsunami. Who do you hold responsible for that? Uh, bubbles are always uh, hard to uh, ascertain. Uh, the uh, originators of it. There really aren't any originators. Everybody got caught in. Some, some were foolish, some were crooked, some were both. Uh, but you had a mass uh, illusion that it could go on forever. You had Wall Street firms participating, you had mortgage originators participating, but you had the public participating. And, and it, it was, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was like going to Cinderella, going to the party. I mean, it was all going to turn to mice and pumpkins at midnight, but nobody wanted to leave until one minute to midnight, and, and the rush for the door was, um, couldn't be handled. What for you were the, the lessons you learned from 2008? I didn't really learn any new lessons in 2008 or 9. I had emphasized to me some of the things that that I'd always believed that you do need somebody who can say, well, do whatever it takes. The U.S. government had to do the right things, not perfect things, but generally the right things starting in, in September. And, and they did a fantastic job, actually, of getting the train back on the tracks. There was still damage for a long period thereafter, but it was really important to have uh, fast action at that time. And we were very fortunate we had the leaders uh, we did. Uh, if, if we'd had people who uh, waited for all the information to be right or for committees to work or, uh, you know, that sort of thing, it would have been far, far worse. There's, people talk about a fog of war, but there's a fog of panic too. And during that panic, you're, you're getting inaccurate information, you're hearing rumors. If you wait till you know everything, it's too late. People today, 10 years later, they're still affected by the, the, the crisis, various people in different ways, but they're not as affected as they were in 2009 or 2010. Has that confidence come back? Yeah, but it comes back slowly. I can understand why people that lost their houses or lost their jobs or whatever may have happened to them feel that there must be somebody out there that was profiting from this that did it doing some things that should send them to jail. You know, the, the people that ran most of the institutions, the big institutions, uh, they got in trouble. I mean, I probably shouldn't name names, but, but uh, you know, they went away rich. Uh, they may have been disgraced to some degree, but they went away rich. So I don't think the incentive system has been improved a lot from, from what it was 10 years ago. If I knew what the next crisis would look like, I could probably, it might be a little bit helpful in stopping it. But there will be other crises. There's no way of knowing when you're in a situation like we were in in the fall of 2008 or 9, when or precisely how it will end. You know the United States will come back. The, the, the factories don't disappear, the farmland doesn't disappear, the skills of the people don't disappear. But 
you had a system which was going to put them all in an idle position or could do it, and there's no way of knowing how far it was going to go. What's left from the crisis is pretty much our memories. I mean, the tracks are still there, the train's still there, but we had a big interruption in 2008 or, and 2009, and now the train has been running pretty darn well, and uh, we've shown that uh, America can't be stopped. Mm -hmm.